Okay, first of all, straight up, right off the bat, I am not a professional, okay? I am, once again, I am not a professional, okay? Not a professional makeup artist, not a professional special effects makeup artist, and not a professional in anything yet. And this is just how I would do it, okay? This is how I would personally do it as an amateur <laughs> who who is really, who has been into uh, special effects makeup for like a long fucking time, and I just do it for fun. I just do it because I like it, right? I'm passionate about it. You know, I like dressing up, I like transformation, yada yada, all of that. Anyways, now that's out of the way, <laughs> now that's out of the way. Hi, it's Miley. <laughs> This is already so awkward. Today I'm going to be doing a nice little tutorial. I try to keep it as short as possible. It's really, it's really hard because there's a lot of footage. There's a lot of footage. I had to speed them up like, like two, four or five times. I know that for a lot of people, when it come when it comes to like you know dressing up for Halloween, all that stuff, it's more it's more often like oh I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I'm really busy. I'm really tired. What if I don't have enough materials? What if I don't have anything? I, I'm not I don't make a I don't make a person. I don't have face paint in my house. What if I've never painted anything before? I'm an amateur. I've never done anything. I don't know what to do. I t don't worry, don't worry. I got you. I got you. Because today I'm going to do three different actually technically three different tutorials on the same look, which is the skull slash skeleton whatever. I will do that look in three different time intervals between five minutes, an hour. And three hours. Now you can choose. It depends on what your level of what, how much, how hard you want to commit to the look. I know that a lot of people don't have a lot of time in their hands to do these things. I know. I I know. I was one of them. Okay. And not not only have a lot of times, but are you know struggling broke college students or just like high school students who can't afford to buy expensive, high end quality materials. I even I can't buy that shit now. So I always started off with using materials that are the cheapest possible but still versatile you know what i mean don't stress out if you're if you don't know how to do this it's it's okay it's, it's completely normal it's completely normal to mess up okay i i actually film <laughs> i actually did film the 30 minutes version before but i didn't i don't really like the look of it so uh yeah it's okay it's okay if you're just starting off if it takes you longer than expected if it takes you shorter than expected that's great but yeah if it takes longer than expected then no problem no problem it's okay it's okay all right it's fine it will still look cool anyways that's the good thing about the, for the skull makeup it's like if you do it wrong in a way it still looks cool if you want to get right to the tutorial skip to this timestamp uh i will put timestamps in the description as well for each of the looks but now i'm going to walk you through the materials now another disclaimer do not put things that are not face safe skin safe um health safe on your face okay i'm talking acrylic paint now i <laughs> Not gonna lie, I have been guilty of putting acrylic paint on my face before, but only in like very tiny amounts. Like when I did this jigsaw look, I did like on the cheek and then yes, on the eye. Don't do that. Do, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, acrylic paint sometimes is marketed as like non toxic. It still shouldn't go on your face because especially if you have like low quality or like you know, cheap acrylic paint, which I do. Fucking hell, it's not safe. It's not safe for your skin. Okay, it's there. There are other chemicals in there. It's very risky. It's not worth. Worth it if you don't if you're like very very desperate I can understand but don't don't do it as your own risk okay do it at your own risk just just know that I do not encourage it okay I know when I first started off I didn't I don't have a lot of materials okay I have like barely anything I don't have anything so I know what it feels like to be like oh man I want to do this really cool makeup look I don't have any tools it's okay it's okay it's these things that I have well either you might even be able to find in your house you can borrow from someone or it's very cheap to buy in like Vietnamese stores or on Shopee online. Ideally, buy them online. It's much cheaper. The five minutes version, you only need two things. Uh, actually, actually, you only need one thing technically. You can use either of these, and it would work. And you'll need this is probably the most important thing. If you have it, you're settled. Um, an eyeliner. An eyeliner. Now you can have liquid eyeliner, um, pencil eyeliner, any sort of eyeliner. I this one I have is a pencil eyeliner, like. Like extremely cheap. I bought it on Shopee. You, know, you can draw lines with it. You can even fill in big areas with it. I'll, I'll, you can see. You'll see why later. You can just fill in entire. You can do your entire face with this. You can even blend it in as a shading and like I uh, and like um, contour and such. So very versatile. Probably if you're gonna get anything, get this. If you're gonna do anything. Now, secondly, it would be great if you have it, but you know it's fine. Eyeshadow, black eyeshadow in particular. It's not the most pigmented thing ever, but it works, right? In fact, if you want, if you have a little brush and then you can, if you don't have eyeliner, you can technically like wet the, wet this brush and then like put it in the eyeshadow and it kind, it can kind of create a line, like so it can draw. Technically you can do that. So yeah, in a way, these things, these two are interchangeable so that you can have one or the other and it would work. If you can buy face paint, I know that in Vietnam, uh, in, on Shopee, they sell mostly grease, um, oil-based face paint. I really don't recommend grease paint, it, but I know that's a lot of people, that's the only thing they can get here. So, 
if you have it use it it's okay all right it's good that's what i would really recommend is water-based face paint my lovely friend emma shout out to your girl bought me these face paints from paris one day you can just spray water on it and then use it like watercolor and it's it dries it actually does dry on its own so you don't need powder um it's a lot more comfortable it's a lot more lightweight and it uh and it's easier generally a lot easier to use so yeah, if you can get um water-based paint really re really recommend really really recommend so yeah that's um uh yeah that's uh, that's it all right so let's start with the five minutes version of course start start off by tying your hair up okay get get your hair out of your face you know get a nice clear canvas going now in this clip i'm starting to trace out the um, eye sockets you don't have to do this okay you'll see why later don't don't do this just start by drawing out the shape of the nose trace out the shape of the nose like like what i'm doing there Seems about right. And then start to trace in the ch the cheekbones, the cheekbone lines. And mark where you want it to end. Try to replicate it as much as possible on the other side. You know, it's not, you don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. And then draw a straight line coming from the corner of your lips to the, to that, to that line over, uh, to the cheekbones. Fill in the in inner part of the lip as well to make it blend better. Draw straight lines coming from the corner, uh, coming from the lips going upward or downward is fine. And you don't have to draw curved lines. In this, I drew curved lines. You don't have to do it. Just do straight lines. It, it probably might look better, but or maybe if you do it curved, just a little bit curved, not too much. So you don't really need that many curved lips. Do the same with the bottom lip. You can drag it out a little longer if you want, and then fill in at the ends to, to make it darker, to make it look more like teeth and a little more depth, you know, it gives a little bit more depth, you know, a little more oof, you know what I mean? Do the same with the other side, and then fill in the, fill in that cheek thing you can fix, you can fix the cheekbone part however you want. And then using this black eyeshadow from earlier, you try to fill in the, the eye shadow as close to your eye as possible. This is called like I guess tight lining the eye, but I'm this is that not actually tight lining. The real tight lining is like right at the waterline. Like, it, it's it's kind of terrifying. I I haven't been able to do it, but just do it as close to your eye as possible so that when you open it, there's no like white waterline coming out anymore. So just try to make it as close. Don't try not to stab your eye. Okay, be safe. Don't stab your eye. But yeah. And then blend it in and you can see in this i can i realize that first of all you don't need to brush it again just, just use your fingers it's fine and also that socket we're not gonna have enough time to fill this eyeshadow this entire socket up within five minutes so just don't even need to don't don't even need to do that i that um trace uh, of the eye socket at first see I'm, I'm like blending it out you don't need it using the same eyeshadow fill in the nose fill in the nose shape you can fill in with the eyeliner too, of course. So these steps you can completely do with just the eyeliner. You don't even need the eyeshadow, but it, it, it makes it a little faster, I guess. Um, shade in the in inside the lips to make it look more vampy, as well as the lines, blending the lines and blending the cheekbones part to make it look more like an ombre, like a little fade, you know, just to make it look like really nice, easy contour. As well as blending it down the jawline as well. This is very important. Blend in your jawline and maybe have some lines go down the neck as well do the same on the other side darkening any spots if needed again you can use your fingers for this don't need the brush it probably might be faster actually so you know, just, just use your fingers blend in any parts that are necessary darkening any areas that need it And that's about it basically that's it for five minutes you can also add ample sockets if possible that they'll make it more realistic blend down the neck and refining any lines if needed and these are extra steps or you can do a winged liner even you know make it nice have fun with it no problem for the 30 minutes version we're gonna start to whip out the black face paint now now add some water to it add some water to it on the brush using that same eyeshadow brush earlier and just fill in the eye socket you can do the tracing but i don't think it's necessary just fill in that circle shape around the eye and because this is water based you can use put water on a towel little piece of towel and just wipe it off any mistakes that you have 
and try to fill in as much as possible. And you can make this little line coming up in the corners. Go over that uh, same cheekbone uh, sockets marking from earlier, but darkening it a lot and creating a nice shape. You can see what I'm doing, right? It's hard to explain. Just, just look at what I'm doing. And then you can blend it with your fingers or with a brush and make it almost like an ombre that, dark, that lightens as you go out. Do the same on the other side, darkening any areas if needed, of course, with more paint. And blend down the, mark down the jawline, of course, always, always go over the jawline, always. And fill in the nose area, any parts that are needs to be darkened, as well as the inner part of the lips. And that and the teeth line to really define the teeth, you know, define where the teeth is. Uh, draw this little crevice on the top of the nose bridge, as well as blending it in to add more shadows. Cause I don't know, I see that in the reference picture, so I'm like, all right. And fill in the I fill in the temple sockets, you know, cause we have a little bit more time now. But this time, take it down near the cheek, take it down near the cheekbone a little bit more, and take it out again, doing like nice blending motions. Uh, you can also mark where the um, brow bone is with that same shading technique. I decided to deepen the eye socket and create these sort of dimples like crevices near the nose, right next to the nose. And then blend and then using the, the leftover from your brush, again, this is, which, is, which is very important, so don't wash your brush just yet. Just use a little leftover of paint on your brush and use it as shading. That's, that is always very useful. Add shadows around the lines, around the eye socket, lines of the eye socket to make them pop more. Connect the two dimples looking thingies to the, to the cheekbones. Blend it down your jaw to make it look even more sharp, I guess. Make it look even more like hollowed out, a uh, sort of illusion. Again, there's, if there's any lines, you can go over it with some shading so that it, to make it like go right, right next to it, some shading, and then you can blend with your fingers to make them look a lot more popping, a little bit more, uh, a little, just a little bit more realistic. Just a little bit more, okay? Any line. Oh yeah, go um, go blend underneath the teeth to mark where the gums is so that we can, so that later on if we trace in the teeth, it looks a bit more real, it looks a little bit more realistic. So like, trace right underneath the line of the gums and blend it upwards and move the brush upwards. Now, you know, using a tiny little detail brush, start to trace out the lines of the teeth, the definition of the teeth, like the gums and such. Just very simple lines. They don't have to be uniform, by the way. They don't have to all be the same. Teeth are crooked naturally, anyways. So just, just do it like random ass little, little curved lines. So it makes you look kind of like teeth. And uh, yeah, again, blend, do more extra shadows and shading any any time that there is near a line anywhere that needs to be. Um, so that's around the eye socket again the cheekbones wipe off any excess if you if you feel the shadow you feel the shadows are too dark do the same with the temples line and blend a bit of it on your forehead so that makes it gives it a little bit more texture like it's popping out so it's not just your natural forehead now if you have a huge fucking forehead like me like you have a lot of forehead real estate like me this should be quite simple or it might not even be necessary, honestly, but whatever. It, it looks nice, right? It looks give more shading, more depth, more texture, if you know what I mean. Blend down your neck using the same shading. Blend down your neck. And that's about it. But if you want to do a little bit more, you can also uh, add white highlights you see, using the white face paint. And then if you, it looks too intense, you can use your fingers to blend it out. Because we didn't block out the lips from before, because I didn't want to, um, I guess, make the black not opaque enough, I added the white paint into in each teeth so that it makes it they pop a lot more to sell the illusion more, as well as some lines of white going down to highlight the, the, the gums, to highlight the gums of the teeth, I don't know. It, 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 like, it looks cool, it, it, look, it looks fun, right? It, like in the picture, to make it look like the teeth are actually like popping out. Add more highlights to each, another layer of highlight to them if needed, to make them pop more. 
honestly, in this tab, you can uh, you can start off with painting your like a nice thin layer of white, which is fine. But to me, this looks pretty okay too, because then it makes the highlights pop even more than just having a white background. So you can use it on your natural skin. There's no no problem. Um, add highlights around the nose, around the eye sockets, just lines of highlights so that they make them look pop even more. Because especially if they're next to that shadow, that um, sh shading that you just did earlier, if hi highlight is right next to contour, it, it makes everything like pop even more. Like it makes protruding out, it makes it look more out. So it makes it look more, a little bit more real, just a little bit more real. I do the same on the other side making sure the highlight is a little bit like it's can you can start off the highlight very tame and then blend it out with your fingers and then go over it again with the lines to make like kind of double highlight in a way so it makes it pop and not just fade away into the background do more sh do some shading in the inner corner of the lips on the teeth to make them look a bit more to make them look more like the reference picture and while you're at it might as well paint your paint your ears it's not that uncomfortable but you know it's uh, it, it might might as well commit you already spent an hour on this right M might as well commit blend down the neck even more highlight the cheek your collarbone and your neck so that it makes it look more hollowed out and you know like a little little dead you know And uh, yeah, that's it. That's about it for the hour-long version. Uh, this look is a lot. This look has a lot more, a little bit more effort, while still looking, while still not wasting that much time. Now, yes, an hour is a lot of time, but you know, it's not, it is not that bad. Now, for the three hours version, first of all, if you choose this version, uh, you're my type of people. <laughs> First off, we're gonna have to build, do some sort of ball cap because I want I want this to look more like an actual like skull. Now I would usually, if I want to collect and put all my hair back, I would use this um, wig cap where you put it on your hairline and then you and then you pull the rest back and you can just put all your hair in this nice little net, which is very convenient because it's black. Because I only have the black wig cap, it will then I will have to paint over that black later, and so that would be not as easy. So it won't be as easy because you know painting over black so i decided to use to take advantage of the the half of my hair that is lighter the the light the that is the light blue and i try my best to kind of uh, clip all of it back and change the parting of the hair to make it look like it's covering all of the head and using all kinds of clips and such to clip it back to give a lighter color surface to go on so that the white paint can cover it a lot easier than just pure black and yikes i'm gonna have to re-dye my dark roots soon Now, and now we're gonna make some FX gelatin, which is one part water, one part gelatin, and half a part glycerin. Mix them all together, and then put it in the microwave for 15 seconds. You don't need that much, just until it's like liquidy. I only made a little, because we're not gonna need a lot to glue a ball cap on. You can do what I did here when I put it in my hand to test the temperature, see if it's hot or not, because again, do not burn yourself. Make sure the mixture is warm to cool, okay? Please don't burn yourself. It's, it's very easy to burn yourself with this. Just please be careful, okay? And if it's warm enough, uh, start to put it around your hairline. At that point, I realized that you should probably use some sort of Vaseline or some sort of balm to put on this hair hairline. Here, I'm using a lip balm here because that's all I have at the moment to kind to protect your hair from getting the gelatin on to so that it won't stick to the hair because it would be pretty painful to pull off. I, I learned that the hard way. So yeah, put that gelatin mixture around your hairline, down the neck as well, so that the ball cap can cover the whole thing. And then just use saran wrap and wrap your head. Yes, that's right. Wrap your head. Now, um, it actually this actually works pretty well. I didn't expect it to work that easily, but it's actually not that bad. So if you're so if you don't want to have a ball cap at home, you can use this technique, boy. Um, and uh, yeah, just wrap it around my head twice. At this point, I look ridiculous. Think <laughs> this is why I would never shave my head, although I'm very tempted. And uh, yeah, enjoy me looking like an egg for the next 20, 10 minutes or so. Cut off just like a wig cap, you can cut off the excess to make the lines, to make the lines, uh, the, 
lines a bit smoother and smooth it out with more gelatin now this part is that i actually didn't do that good of a job because as you can see later there will be still more texture around it it's not the most smooth try to get it as smooth as possible you can use your fingers even although that would be a sticky mess but you can you can use your finger try to make it as smooth as possible but yes if you're in you know in a low budget this is actually a, not a bad way to make a ball cap again do do a better job than i do and after you lay the first gelatin layer and then lay the the plastic wrap on it let it dry a little bit and then add the second layer so that it make sure they don't blend in together and like peels off and all that stuff you can wipe off some of the excess liquid blend it better than i did because later on it's, it did not work in my favor god i just look awful do i jesus look at it. what is that and now powder the living hell out of it <laughs> i'm talking yeah see that yep fucking dust cloud fully just powder the living shit out of it because so that it is so it's not sticky anymore it's easier to work with and you can see the texture more and, and after the after powdering it it gives the gelatin kind of like a nice and airbrushed matte finish it's quite nice and now we're going to do the classic drag queen's technique of blocking eyebrows which is gluing the eyebrows down with a glue stick using a glue stick to really cover the eyebrow the whole way and then smooth it upwards so that it lays flat onto the head now, I kind I also kind of did this wrong as well because I think you're supposed to powder the glue when it's still kind of wet. Because after, because when I tried to powder the glue, um, when it kind of dried a little, it didn't really stay on the glue that well. It's kind of, it kind of bounced off right away, so it didn't really do much. So you know, maybe may if you if you are gonna powder the eyebrows, block the eyebrows, uh, powder it when it's wet. But I don't, I don't think it matters because later later on, I your paint will go over it anyways now that that step is done you need you're gonna need a makeup sponge now if you don't have a makeup sponge i also have another very budget friendly way of making a makeup sponge where you literally just take fabric scraps that's right don't throw away your fabric scraps okay save that shit and just cover it with plastic wrap many rounds and ta-da <laughs> It works pretty well actually and it doesn't soak up product so a hey. now this is the easy part you just literally just cover your face white I, I left out my eye socket because I know that the eye socket is just gonna be filled with black anyways and this is why I didn't do a white base for the other looks because it, usually when you put like when you after you put white water base uh, black water based paint over a layer of white sometimes they kind of blend into each other it becomes gray so it's not as opaque so that's why I left the eye socket open so that it so that it can read like really true dark black like. The next following steps will just be very similar to the 30 minutes and the and 30 minutes and that one hour version. We've seen this. We we went through this. It's okay. Basically, essentially, just do the same thing but more detail. So I, so actually, I was frequently looking to the right because I was really looking at the reference picture to make sure that all the details are right. And okay, I, I, it wasn't perfect. Okay, it's not that. It's not as realistic as I wanted to. I really tried. Okay, I tried. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so yeah, it was it was not perfect, but it's okay. I think it was fine. Do the same, so just trace out all the teeth, all the cheekbones, you know. Now, but this part, it's a little different in that basically, basically you add more details to it. So it's more, because we have a lot more time, you know, we don't have any time restrictions. We just, you just add more detail. Just take your time with it. Have fun. No problem. Um, and also because we have more real estate on the ears, so we can t take that line out to the ear a lot more and kind of block out the ear as well as doing this temple, this uh, temple crevice a lot better because in the picture the the, um, the crevice kind of like has a, like this ombre effect going outwards and it's a lot deeper so it, so it looks like it's more sunken in because you know it's an actual skull it's sunk it is a lot more sunken in and then yeah as you can see I, I, it's really hard to, again it's really hard to explain you can see what i'm doing right right um you can also block paint out the black uh, the ears apparently black because uh, skeletons don't have ears and yeah just do just follow as closely to the reference picture as possible you can look at skulls at a side view sideways views and such and i'll blend that in more later that looks a, lot, a little rough but that's okay i'll blend it more later and yeah basically do the same thing Now the reason why I came, I wanted to do this type of video in the first place was because I was inspired by those uh, tasty videos where it's like one five minutes versus one hour versus two three days past that or something. And I think that's such a cool idea because so a lot of a lot of the reason why a lot of people are put off with like doing like you know interesting cool Halloween makeup and such because it takes a lot of time, right? That's the problem. It takes a lot of time. And people are too scared of it because like, oh man, I don't have a lot of time to do this, man. It's like I just want to look like. 
I don't want to put a lot of effort. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Sometimes it just takes, like, all you need is, like, five minutes and a few an eyeliner and you're good. Like, sometimes you don't have to, um, it doesn't have to take that long. And it was, you will still achieve a really interesting and impactful look without spending too much effort or time. And also, I understand why people would not want to do, like, for example, like, this three hours look, people probably wouldn't want to do this because it looks... It doesn't look that pretty, right? I mean, it looks cool to me, but like some, in, I know that it can look a bit more on the disfigure side because of the ball cap, you know what I mean? The, the ball cap. And and a lot of it looks like SFX and stuff. I, I can understand why people are not wanting to do it because it doesn't look pretty because it doesn't make them look like good looking. And I completely understand. I used to be those people. Uh, I used to be those people who were like against that where I was like, I was like, oh my god, it's Halloween. What do you mean you want to be pretty, okay? It's Halloween, it's supposed to be scary, okay? Get it right. Commit to it. Like, I was those people. I was very serious about it. Until about two years ago, Halloween 11th grade, and I wanted to do a be a mummy, a classic mummy, right? A, a different take on a classic mummy. And... I oh girl I spent I I I planned this shit days in advance weeks even like because I was really excited for it. I love I love dressing up okay I love Halloween it's my favorite time of the year and then um and so I would like plan out and make the costume I would make the rib cage thingy I would make all of it until the day when I assembled it which took a long fucking time and it it didn't even turn out that great by the way like a lot of it was falling out all of it was falling out actually i didn't have enough cloth it was just it was just awful but the makeup i did a lot i spent a lot of time on, on the makeup it's my first time using sfx uh, gelatin actually so i used like i did the eye thingy which no, is not that bad actually it was kind of nice and then the cheek and then the on my body so to make it look like decaying meat and like the side of the cheek is like rotten it rotting away and such it's not that bad, but I I remember going on the bus in the morning when I I, I was five like ten minutes late by the way I, I'm so sorry bus monitor, but yeah I went on the bus and like the kids were genuinely terrified. There were little kids on the bus. They were actually terrified. And it's not like the oh my god your costume is so cool that is so scary I love it that's so awesome no no it's genuine fear <laughs> genuine like horror in their eyes. They're like eh, what the fuck is that. Like, it, it, it was just not. And so I felt almost, like, in on the bus today, I felt almost, you know, like, they were literally looking at me like a, like an actual monster, which, now you might think, isn't that the point? Like, isn't that the point? Like, like what, you want to be scary, right? So it works, right? Shouldn't that, like, you shouldn't you be happy? And I thought about that, too. That's why the whole day I was really conflicted because on one hand, I was like, okay, I did it. I, it's spooky, you know, really nice. But also I felt like I've never felt more uncomfortable in my own st- in myself like i've never felt more insecure because i just look awful right i just look like i just look disgusting the costume itself wasn't again wasn't that good it wasn't it didn't turn out the way i wanted them to technically um i was really short for time and then and oh my god and it just looked bad so after the bus trip i walked into school just feeling awful like i I just want to go home i just want to jump in a vent like i just want to vent girl like i don't want to i don't want to be here and the whole day i felt awful and then the worst part oh the worst part of all is that not only that i can't vent i have to go on stage to dance like for some reason that day we decided to do like a dance because like okay oh oh right like there was like a class runway thingy whatever so we decided to do a k-pop dance and out of anything it's unpun man for bts <laughs> which is a bob but then it's like oh my god imagine so imagine me in this terrifying costume in this terrifyingly like ugly uh, mummy costume, dancing next to these girls who these my friends who they all look so good, right? They all look good, and then there's me, <laughs> just dancing the Anpan Man. It, it was so awkward. I did awful because I was very again very very unconfident, right? I had to peel off the sunken mouth prosthetic because it just that's why there's this weird black patch on my face. It's just not it. It's not worth it. So yeah, that day I just that's the day that I realized that okay, I can understand why people want to be pretty for Halloween now. I can understand now. It, it makes sense, right? It's it's like yes, you wanna. Like, you want to be... Being scary is still my thing. I love it, right? It's still... It's, like, because I, I think creating those, like, creatures are so cool. And it's such an interesting and marvelous, marvelous art form that is that takes a lot of skill. And a lot of people don't appreciate it, but it's genuinely really amazing. So, and I really like it. But sometimes you gotta... Maybe we can... You can do other, like, sort of humanoid creatures that are still... Like, it's, like, the borderline between pretty and terrifying. I like that. So, I like... So I like to do those more now, which is why I did the Medusa thing for 12th grade. That that was a lot better. That outfit was... It's, 
disgusting. But like everything else was good. Uh, the makeup was good. The wig was good. So yeah, it's um, so yeah. That's the day that I learned that. And, you know, it's okay. People, be whatever you want for Halloween, man. It's okay. It does if you want to dress up cute, pretty, terrifying, whatever. Do whatever you want. Okay, live your life. And yeah, just it's a Halloween it's supposed to be a fun day. As you can see what I'm doing here, I'm basically just tracing out the shape of the skeleton that is underneath. Starting from my neck, down to the collarbone, which you can follow the actual- you can flex your collarbone and follow the actual lines of your collarbone. So you can see where the bones are all positioned. So uh, that's more- that's very useful. And then you can trace out the lines first and fill in the empty- the negative space with just pure black paint. This is why I didn't paint my entire neck black, because again, the black with the white might blend and becomes grey and I don't like that. I want it to be true, opaque, dark- dark ass black so that it really so it sells the illusion of a of empty background even more and, and when you're doing this it's probably better to wear like sort of an sort of an off the shoulder top so that you have more uh collarbone real estate to work on you know what i'm saying um so yeah just keep going on that adding drawing each of the so, so just paint, trace in each of the vertebrae each of the vertebrae, each of the, um, the rib cage, right? Each of the bone, little round bones on the rib cage and everything. I'm not bio major, okay? And yeah, just try your best and do it halfway because I don't think I can do it all the way down to my chest. You just do it halfway, wipe off any part that you think is too much, and then you just have fun with it. Just take your time, no problem. Have fun with it. Um, you can paint, you can paint it all the way out to the shoulder. You can paint your arm too, but you know it's a lot of work. So I, I, I recommend not, especially if you're, it's cold there. So you can wear like a jacket over it. So you know, it doesn't really matter. Do any shading in between if you need it, and and I'm I'm really I'm trying to follow closely to a picture of a model of a skeleton. It's not again, it's not perfect. Okay, I'd really try it. Okay. It's okay. It's you know it, when it this part you don't have to be too scared about. It. it looks intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. It's just a it's just a nice line drawing, you know, no problem. And if you don't get it right, it's okay, no problem. This is this one is not that realistic either. It just looks kind of. You might be wondering, wow, what are those very lovely lo-fi remixes that you have in the background going on there? I'm glad you asked. My lovely friend Ling, uh, I, sorry, Liona Music, <laughs> makes her own original songs, uh, lo-fi remixes, everything. So go follow her on her SoundCloud, and she might be releasing them to Apple Music and or Spotify as well. So go show my girl some love, alright? She is a talented, up-and-coming young artist. And then because I didn't fill in a lot of white from before, I you can go back in with a with a little bit bigger brush and then just fill in the white and blend in with your fingers so that it looks more not as intense. And go through all the bones and such brighter areas of white with the parts at the front so that it pops more. And um, and just and then just go over it with more shading of the leftover black paint from the brush, just like before, and shade each of the bones so that they pop. Go over your, uh, go over the top of your face. Refine any lines that needs to be refined with a small brush. Do any more, do any extra shading. You can do shading uh, on the teeth. Uh, you can add extra highlights around the areas that needed highlights, like the hair bone, and fill in any gaps from the ball cap that that got peeled off. See, like mine, because mine lifted off in some area. So just fill in that area with the paint. So like here, I'm filling it with the white paint in, so it blends a little bit better. As well, the, as well as the black paint, adding shadows, add, more, add a little bit of shadows. Really, you gotta go ham on the shadows. Don't be too shy on the shadows, okay? Add a lot. Now, you can go overboard, but you know, still, it's better than lack of shadows. So just add a lot of shadows, lots of shadows. If there's a lot of shadows next to a lot of hi next to highlights, everything works out well. It's gonna be great. So yeah, especially if we're working only with two, with black and white. So it makes things a lot easier. And...
That's about it. You're done. If you were in the dark and with like a front little light in front of you like I did here, you can really, if it can really look like your bones are, you know, blended into the dark and you can't see anything, I would recommend wearing a black glove as well. Again, you can paint your hands, but then you might have to wash your hands throughout the night. Or you can do, you can do the classic death look, you know, where you can just wear a big hoodie over it and make it look like the god of death or something like that yeah this is probably the simplest look that is quite effective because the background of a black hoodie will kind of, will kind of by default provide you with that black background all the time so that it looks so that you can sell the illusion of the skeleton even more wherever you go so it's quite nice and it's very comfy right um, now if you don't want to commit to the ball cap which i completely understand because it is sweaty girl it is not that comfortable it, it's okay but it's not it's not the, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world you can just, you know, you can just dish the ball cap, you don't need the ball cap, so no problem, just use our natural hair, you know. And I, one of the reasons why they choose this look is also because it's very versatile. Like, it can go with literally any outfit. Like, you put on any outfit with this look and it becomes a Halloween costume. Anything. I'm not kidding. For example, you can be a 2013 Tumblr skeleton. Fancy skeleton. Softy skeleton. Wanna be hipster skeleton and uh, year two IB student. You know, it's just very versatile. You can do whatever you want. It's very nice. This look has many applications that is useful. Yeah, that's the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it's useful in any way, shape, or form. If not, then I hope you get entertainment from seeing me look ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, um, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, that's it. Bye.